Welcome back to the program. Salmon consumption in New Zealand is going up, which is all very good, unless you happen to be a salmon. But where do they get all the young ones from? Well, a lot of them, in fact, 80%, are bred not far from Christchurch City. It's got a bit of an old history, this particular hatchery. This hatchery's been here since uh, 1955. Um, it was originally owned by the Acclimatisation Society, and it was um, basically the purpose of it was to stock rivers with fish, and so the Acclimatisation Society was like fishing game. Recently, um, because commercial salmon farming has become quite a big industry in New Zealand, um, the main focus of this place is purely for supplying farms with, with fish. So it's now yeah. privately owned? Now it's, yeah, it's been privately owned for the last two years by a consortium of salmon farmers, as well as that this hatchery supplies other farms which um, aren't shareholders in this company. So how many farms are there in the South Island, for example? In the South Island there's 13 farms. Yeah, some of them are very small, just husband and wife operations, and, um, but some are quite big. Uh, one harvests about 8,000 tonne a year. And um, yeah, so we supply about, about 10 salmon farms, so about 80% of the industry is supplied from this hatchery. So obviously people will want to know numbers. How many, how many do you breed? We basically produce a bit over a million baby fish and um, we sell them when they're just that big um, to some farms, but we also hold about 850,000 fish, which we supply in, uh, to, to farms in November. At the moment, we're just feeding fish just all the time. So you must have brood stock? We have uh, brood stock on our own farm, which um, we just select the best fish that we can find, uh, males and females, and, um, and we, we collect their, their eggs in April. But we also source fish from our shareholder farms as well. So they have their own breeding programs happening. And we, in April, which is when fish spawn, um, we'll go and collect the best fish that we can find from farms as well. The problem is, of course, is that all your good stock die after breeding. Yeah, that's it. Like with salmon, um, basically they die after three years. So they live for three years. And then, uh, and then they'll spawn, do their thing. Uh, so in the, in, the, in the wild, they'll be swimming up the river. Then they'll spawn, and then they die. Yeah, and uh, it's the same in, in the commercial sense as well. The main point is that you're turning over every year about a million eggs and the fertilisation is done here obviously? Yep, we collect about a thousand big brood stock, they're about, they're, you know, they'll be about six kilo in, um, in April when, we, when we, we strip the eggs out of them. So we actually, when they're ready to spawn, we'll, we'll kill that fish and then, which sounds really rough, but it's probably better than just what they do in the wild, which is rot away. And, um, we, each fish will collect about 5,000 eggs from it and fertilise them at the hatchery, yeah. And then what happens? We collect the eggs and, um, and collect the milt, which is just um, fish sperm, and um, we fertilise them in our incubators and then they'll just remain there for a month. Um, we just completely leave them alone. Um, they can't, they're really sensitive at that stage. And um, after a month, we um, will then put them in hatching troughs and that's where they will just remain um, for about two months and we just have heaps of guys working here carefully looking after about four million eggs and uh, eventually um, they'll swim up and turn into baby fish about that big, quite small, and that's when they can take a pallet. And um, So we'll just be feeding them and then we'll transfer them out to these raceways. So at the moment there's about 900,000 fish um, just feeding away. Yeah. How do you transport them once they yeah. do leave home? They'll be in the growing raceways, which, is, which are behind me, um, for about three months until they're 20 grams in October. And at, at that stage we'll, we'll load a big milk tanker, which is just like a big Fonterra truck. Um, we can fit about 50,000 in at a time, and they'll just get transfer, transferred all around New Zealand. Um, we've got customers in um, Stewart Island even, so that's a pretty long trip, eh? They, it takes about a day for them to, cut, to leave here and get all the way down across the Fovo Strait and, uh, and, and reach the salmon cages in Stewart Island. And we also supply farms in uh, Marlborough Sounds as well. So they're going yeah. from the fresh water here to salt water? Is they just yeah. adapt as they would in the river? Yeah, exactly. It's, they, for example, if, if we transported fish to um, Stewart Island, we may, trans we, we may get about a 1% mortality from that max. In fact, actually last year we sent 150,000 there and um, lost about 50 fish, yeah. So they really, they can handle it fine, it's not a problem. So tell me a wee bit about the, the problems with animal husbandry, or in this case yep. fish husbandry. Are there any problems there? New Zealand is really blessed in that there are absolutely no diseases at all. 
as opposed to other countries like in Canada where they have a whole cocktail of viruses and bacteria which, um, which kill salmon basically and um, so we don't need to treat fish, feed them antibiotics or anything um, so long as we just keep the water nice and clean and, uh, and keep the tanks clean then it's, they're fine. You're using spring water here and obviously everything you take gets used by the salmon and then goes back into the stream. Yeah, 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 basically that's it. That's the beauty of, of freshwater fish farming. We draw water from the stream and we put the same river water straight back into the river so, so we don't actually take any water. But How yeah. do you keep the oxygen up to the fish? Basically we make sure that we have plenty of water going through uh, each tank and um, as fish grow they require more oxygen from the water so it's just a case of keeping plenty of water flow we, there, there, there may be an occasion where water flow drops and we may have to actually put pure oxygen into the, into the tanks. Um, so we have the ability to do that as well. Nutrients, how do you, what do you feed them and where do you get it from? Because it's a, be a pretty specialist diet. Yeah, it is, very specialist. Um, we, there, we actually source it from Chile and, um, and France. It's a, it's a very special diet which contains roughly 50% fish meal and the rest of it is just um, other ingredients. We basically, yeah, supply, buy it all off mainly chili at the moment, yeah. And budgeting, because you're, you're feeding into a system at yep. the bottom end of it and the, and the consumer is dictating the amount that gets eaten at the other. It must be hard to do your budgets. Yeah, well basically we get orders each year from uh, salmon farms and um, we, so, so we know basically before the season how many fish um, people require. It's not yet yeah, not an issue. Yeah. Growing industry though. Yeah, it's a very growing industry. Um, we found that demand is just increasing um, each year. Like we obviously aren't selling food fish to the market, but um, each year we're just finding fish salmon farms are requiring more and more salmon. Yeah, for them to grow.